move over to our Kraken, who do play tonight. So we'll, we're trying to get this out as quickly as we can. Um, it seems like most of this season has been, the, the theme of this season has been consistency, and that rang true once again today, uh, well, this past week. Starting, uh, it was a three-game homestand for the Kraken. Uh, three of these games continued a four-game stretch against all Pacific Division opponents, uh, starting with a November 20th loss in overtime against the Calgary Flames, uh, three to four. This photo of the game uh, by Liz Walter taken of Vince Dunn on the ice kind of makes it, it's kind of like how we all felt after this one. Our player of the game was Vince Dunn, one goal, one assist, two points, four shots, one plus minus, and one block. Seattle had a lead going into it late. They gave up the equalizer, uh, and they were unable to do much in overtime. Uh, unfortunate, a wraparound chance gets rebounded, and, and Calgary is able to score that one. Joy Decord plays a largely great game. Seattle can't really help him out. Um, yeah, another one of these games where, you know, one period kind of lets you down, um, and they end up paying for it. They do get the one point from this loss, which, you know, we can say about a lot of these things uh, with this Kraken team this year, but knowing that the two points was in hand, basically, uh, is what's frustrating. You know, we go a few days later, the day before Thanksgiving, and the Kraken take care of business against a historically bad Sharks team. On November 22nd, they beat the Sharks 7-1, to including a four-goal first period. Uh, all started off with Brandon Tanev's breakaway goal. He's able to finally finish one of those in our photo of the game by Sage Zepetto. Uh, our player of the game, though, with a four-point night, was the maestro Oliver Bjorkstrand. One goal, three assists, four points, a three-plus minus, and two shots. For Oliver in that game and then we you know so you feel positive right after this big win against the Sharks obviously it's the Sharks uh it was almost expected maybe not seven goals but you kind of said hey you need to win this game no matter what you can't mess around and have this be a sneak by so you feel good coming off of that and then you're going into play a Vancouver Canucks team that you had beaten the week before and had lost three of the last four games. Obviously, you know, it's different. Um, you can't just look at that and say, hey, we're going to steamroll these guys, given that, uh, because it went the other way. Seattle lost this game by a score of 1-5 to five to close out their homestand with a 1-2 uh, and two record. Um, well, technically, a one win, one regulation loss, one overtime loss record, but you get the point. Uh, no play of the game for you for this one, just because of how frustrating this one was. Um, and this photo of the game by Sage really kind of uh, shows it. This fight in the third period. Excuse me, uh, Yanni Gord. Uh, finally, some pushback after Brendan Tanev had been hit uh, by Nils Hoaglander uh, and Oliver Bjorkstrand had been hit uh, by Tyler Myers. Yes, that Tyler Myers that knocked out Matty Beneers last year and kept him out of the All-Star game. Both Bjorkstrand and Tanev left that game uh, and did not return. Tanev has not been seen skating with the team since, and Bjorkstrand was seen skating the next day, um, but there's some some thought that he might not be able to go today. I, I, that's a rumor. I don't know if that's entirely true. Um, this, this one sucks. Seattle had four uh, power play opportunities in the first period, was in, unable to do anything there. And then to start the second period, uh, a strong push, but nothing that mattered in that one. Uh, and they got a late goal in the second period that didn't really end up mattering as Vancouver ended up pulling away in the third there. It's a, it's a consistency. I don't know. It not, it's nothing has changed with this team. That While well, they're consistently inconsistent, um, you know, they'll do things good. Uh They'll do a lot of things good, but the 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 bad things will compound largely into one period, and they'll end up affecting the rest of the game, whether it be in the first, in the second, or in the third. That's what's happening with this Kraken team. You know, uh, there's been a lot of back and forth. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that with the roster related moves, um, but I'm not seeing a lot of like new issues with this team per se. It's just the inconsistency level is so high with this team. We see what they can do. They're not doing it for a full 60 minutes. So, and I don't know how much of it's an effort thing per se, as much of it's an execution thing over those 60 minutes. So I, I it's, it's very frustrating to see play out uh, because you know what this team is capable of. We know what this team is capable of. We've seen it 
from time to time this season. Um, but they're just not doing it for the full game. So uh, in injury related news and such um, on the 24th, Andre Burkowski was seen with the team for morning skate in a red, no co- non-contact Jersey. Um, the day before he was seen doing individual work in a normal Jersey before the team got in their normal skate. Um, well, their practice. So he wasn't with the team then the next day he was with the team in a non-contact Jersey. Um as I mentioned, Brandon Tanev left the game against the Canucks with a lower body injury. He has not been seen practicing since, uh, and I don't believe he is with the team on the road trip. One minute. Tanev is day-to-day, but is unavailable tonight. So there's that. Um, on the 25th, there was nothing new on Tanev at that current point in time. I was unsure if he was traveling with the team, but given that thing I just read, I imagine he is. Uh, Philip Grubauer, who is injured in the f- loss of the Flames, uh, will travel with the team, but no update from his day-to-day status. He is getting the start tonight in goal uh, for the Kraken. So there's your update on that. Um, here we go with the roster bouncing up and down. Um, on the 21st, the team recalled goaltender Chris Drieger from the AHL Coachella Valley Firebirds as a corresponding move, uh, move to Grubauer's injury. Uh, on the 23rd, the team reassigned forward Andrew Podorowski to the AHL Coachella Valley Firebirds uh, with Tanev coming back. On the 25th, the team reassigned Chris Drieger back to the AHL. Didn't get any time here with the crack, and he was practicing, and he was the backup, but he didn't get any action. Uh, on the 27th, the team recalled forward Andrew Podorowski from the Firebirds uh, just four days after sending him down. Today, the team recalled forward Marian Sudanich from the Firebirds. Uh, with Podorowski set to slot in, I imagine Sudanich is just there as a, uh, as a healthy scratch. But that's the only sort of update that we've gotten. So, um, yeah, a lot of bouncing up and down for Dreegs, Pots, and Studs. Uh, Well, not Studs so much, but Dreegs and Pots. So, yeah, uh, this poor team, man. The inconsistencies, the injuries. uh, Berkey's working his way back. Uh, Tanev had just gotten back. Um, Yeah, really, really tough. You know, talking about getting consistency, you're not getting consistency from your line up because guys are hurt. So uh, also what happened on the 22nd, uh, the team unveiled the Winter Classic jerseys. Obviously, we've seen the leaks. So if you haven't seen the leaks, uh, here they are Uh, um, on the right. The Utah Jazz, which was the first one, the Utah Jazz posted their walk in photos with Walker Kessler and John Collins. Walker Kessler's there pictured uh, wearing it on Friday, last Friday. And everybody was kind of like, what in the hell is happening? Uh. Two Fridays ago, I apologize. Everyone was like, what's happening? Why do they have these? They look great, but why? Then the next day, AEW posted with the jersey in the photo, in the, the middle photo you see there. And then Micah Parsons on Monday was seen with the jersey on his uh, podcast last weekly show in the background. So we're all like, what the hell? Why hasn't the team said anything? Well, one, because it's a league-run event. The Winter Classic is a league-run event, so the team doesn't really have too much control over it. And two, when are we going to get the full reveal? On the 22nd, morning skate of the 22nd, uh, ahead of the Sharks game, we got that official reveal, and we'll go over some photos here by Sage Sabeto that she took um, uh, at the, excuse me, at the layer, the Kraken team store within the Climate Pledge Arena. Um ahead of the game with the jerseys officially revealed. They look great. They look great. Um, the collar is is knitted. Um, the red jerseys that you see with the red numbers, I apologize, the red numbers that you see and the logo on the front are felt, which is really nice to see. Obviously, this was back. Uh, this is paying homage to the Seattle Metropolitans uh, and their 1917 Stanley Cup winning team, the first Amer- North American team. Uh, to win the Stanley Cup ever. Uh, and you can see, obviously, you can see the jerseys there. And then this photo here, those Metropolitans, you can see, obviously, the striping, the S logo that says Seattle. Uh, they're similar. Obviously, the Kraken S here has the word Kraken in it. Uh, you can see the striping with uh, the blues and that cream color, that red alert red on the uh, the numbers, that cream in the name as well. Uh, so I think it looks great. 
personally. I don't think it was ever a question of them looking great. Um, but more so how they were revealed and such on the inside collar is the number 1917. Obviously, like I just said, the 1917 year when the Metropolitans won the Stanley Cup. Um, all of the Kraken team stores have uh, merchandise for the jerseys and the jerseys themselves. The only stores that can't make them customized uh, is the Armory, uh, and that could have updated by now, but that was the last that I was told. Uh, they should have more merchandise coming out as we lead into that actual Winter Classic game on the first at T-Mobile Park. Um, obviously, Seattle's first outdoor game. But, yeah, really exciting to see this. Really love the way they turned out. Really happy with all of that. Uh, not happy so much with um, <laughs> how it all happened. But, yeah, not, not the best um, with the way the release happened. But happy with how they looked. Happy with um, <laughs> how the boys are going to look in them. I just really am curious to see um, what else is going to come about it. Vegas just looks like crap. I will just say that straight up. Um, but nice to really pay homage to some Seattle history here. Um, and, and something nice to be happy about as this team has its inconsistency struggles, as we talked about. So speaking of which, the Kraken sit at an eight win, nine loss, five overtime loss record. They are fifth in the Pacific Division right now. They fell behind Calgary um, with 21 points. Looking ahead, they play tonight, uh, November 28th, at the Chicago Blackhawks with a 5 30 p.m. Pacific time puck drop. Um, <laughs> if you're not aware, there is some drama going on around Chicago uh, re regarding Corey Perry. Uh, they're supposed to be having a press conference pretty soon, actually um to address this so that will be very interesting um but connor bedard is obviously on the scene the top draft pick uh supposed to be a generational player uh former thunderbird kevin korchinski is on this team uh, and former kraken ryan donato is also on this team so it'll be interesting to see how seattle fares tonight against a chicago team that isn't exactly a wagon but isn't a bad team per se and then to continue a four-game road trip, uh, the second game of this week, uh, they will head over up to Toronto to play the Maple Leafs on November 30th with a 4 p.m. puck drop. Both of these games will be on Root Sport. 